presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Bob Hope and Marilyn Maxwell in The Lemon Drop Kid. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Through my association with various writers, I can verify the old adage. To be a success, write about people whom you really know and understand. An outstanding example is the author of tonight's comedy, Damon Runyon. He spent a great deal of his time talking to strange people, strangely named Moose, Harry the Horse, Sorrowful Jones. And he has immortalized them in stories such as Paramount Pictures' The Lemon Drop Kid. In their original roles tonight, we have Bob Hope and Marilyn Maxwell. Horse racing to The Lemon Drop Kid is a business, for our hero is what is vulgarly known as a tout an alleged expert on picking winners. If the horse wins, he gets a reward. If the horse doesn't, well, he gets lost. But the Lemon Drop Kid has an infallible system. He simply touts every horse in every race. Now come with us to Florida, where on this fine December afternoon, the kid is about ready to uh, lower the boom. I tell you, George, the horse that we should bet on is mince pie. But, honey, mince pie couldn't possibly... But I have a hunch. Remember when you ate that mince pie and the next day you were sick and didn't go to work and the office was struck by lightning? But, sweetie, that horse won't run any faster just because I got mince pie. pie. That's a mighty good three-year-old. Has a lot of experience. In fact, he's the only three-year-old out there that's 12 years old. Been chasing fillies longer than Artie Shaw. (laughs) Yeah, it's a mighty good horse. Gonna win a lot of races. That is, if his leg ever gets well. George, you, uh... You think something's wrong with his leg, mister? Think, sir? I'm the track vet. It's a precastinary infection in the pedosaurial area. That's inflamed ligament. He got it from wearing elevator shoes in his back leg so he could be running downhill. Imagine allowing a horse to race with a sore foot. Well, half these horses should be in wheelchairs. Would you believe it, ma'am? There's only one sound beast in the race. Well, good day. No, no. Wait, doctor, wait. Hmm? Uh, if there's only one horse that isn't sick... Please, doc, uh, which one? Oh, that information is confidential, you know, between doctor and patient. No, but we wouldn't have a soul. And we'd share our winnings with you. Oh, no, please. That would be unethical and unorthodox. Oh. However, if after the race you'd like to donate something to the clinic, we're so overcrowded, we have two horses in every bed. Oh, certainly we will. Which horse, doctor, which one feels well? Well, if I were a betting man, I'd consider S-I-X a very lucky number. S-I-X. Come on, honey. We'll think it all on six. Oh, and thank you, Doctor. You're a credit to your profession. I never take credit, just cash. <laughs> the horses are coming out on the track. Hi, you kid. Oh, hi, you gloomy. Here, have a lemon drop. Thanks. How you doing? Not so good, kid. I guess people nowadays are getting brighter. Gloomy, the only bright thing about a horse player is the seat of his pants. Oh, you're doing all right today, huh? Gloomy, how many horses are running in this race? Fifteen. Fifteen. I've already given 14 different winners to 14 different and grateful suckers. How can I lose? Okay, I'll tell you how. For one thing, the cops can grab you. And... Oh, don't be ridiculous. Hey, Gloomy. Huh? Gloomy. What? Look. What? What's the matter, kid? The lure? Oh, do you see what I see? Huh? What? Oh, yeah. What a gorgeous tomato. Look at that gorgeous stuff in her hand. That cute little fistful of Truman turnips. <laughs> Here's where I cover that 15th horse. Kid, no, 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 no. You don't know who she is. It's night, kid. It's night. I beg your pardon. Y'all address me? Yeah, yes. Ma'am, did y'all just drop this $5 bill? Hmm. Did you? It's easy to talk this way. All you have to do is gargle with a bowl of weevils. <laughs> I couldn't have dropped five dollars. You see, my bills are all hundreds. Oh, how neat. Mine, too. I just cashed my relief check. 
Well, you all must be as lucky today as you all are beautiful. Y'all mean this little old bankroll? My gentleman friend is betting all this on Iron Bar. I'm just buying the tickets for him. Iron Bar? Well, corn my pone and chip my chitlins. I was going to drop a handsome figure in that animal myself until my uncle told me the race was fixed. Your uncle? That's old Judge Wilkinson. He's president of the turf club, you know. He's been investigating, of course. My, my. But if the race is fixed for Iron Bar to lose, you almost know who's going to win. Yeah, but I couldn't divulge information like that. I swore on a stack of black-eyed peas and candied yams. It's messy, but binding. <laughs> and cash money here. My gentleman friend would take good care of you after the race. Well, bless your heart, honey child. Well, you all bet number E-I-G-H-U-R-T. You mean dirt pile? No, no, the dirt pile's really got a bloodline out of Hoover by vacuum cleaner. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. And after the race, I'll meet you at the lettuce counter. We'll make a beautiful salad together. Do you all understand? Uh-huh. Well, bye now. Bye, honey. Bye. You didn't do it. You didn't tout her. Did you get a load of her bankroll, Gloomy? Two grand. Must be a lady butcher. <laughs> you ever hear of Moose Moran betting any less? Well, who's talking about... M Moose Moran? Yeah. You mean that dolls with Moose Moran? Kid, I tried to stop you. You better be sure you gave her the winner. Winner? I don't know one horse from another. I'll grab her fast and make her change the pick. Go so late, kid. The race is going to start. So am I. And guess where we found the moose? The lemon drop kid is with the cops, the race track cops. Put me in jail, he says. Please, Moose Moran's gonna kill me. You know something? He's right. Bring a bomb in. Okay, kid. The boss is ready to chat with you. Moose? No, no, not here. My corpuscles will ruin your carpet. Sit down. Huh? Oh, now, kid, you're shaking something awful. No, I'm not scared. My goose pimple just came out to see what's going on. <laughs> Here, have a drink. Gee, you're a real solid citizen, Moose, taking your loss like this. Why should I get high blood pressure about ten grand? Yeah, that's what I say. It's not worth... Ten grand? I thought you only lost two grand. I sent the doll down a bit two grand on Iron Bar. You totter off Iron Bar wins. He would have paid me ten grand. Oh, uh, come on in, Sam. Ah, uh, kid, I'd like for you to meet Sam the Surgeon. Sam is the lemon drop kid. Pardon the rubber glove. I have just come from the operating room. <laughs> you want I should now give him a treatment, Moose? I think that's entirely up to the kid. Oh, I, I feel fine, Moose. Nice to meet you, sir. I, I think I'll just run along. Sit now. down. Oops. <laughs> Moose, honest, all I got is 15 cents and a box of lemon drops. Here, have one. Oh, but look, I haven't got ten grand. I'm still making the payments on these lemon drops. Why, if I had ten grand, I... Making me a sucker can be very painful. Shall we prepare him for surgery, boss? Look, Sam, why don't you run down to the blood bank and donate a pint of ice cubes, huh? Oh, now, wait, Moose. Look, I'll get ten grand. Just give me a little Christmas, Moose, and I'll... Where would you get ten grand? Well, in New York. I got a lot of friends on Broadway. Name one. Well, there's, uh... The... Then there's, uh... No, he's not out yet. And there's, uh, I feel like a Democrat in Maine <laughs> Okay, so they're not friends I tell you, I can still raise the money By talking two dollar horse players Oh, I'll find a way, honest I will It's all the same to you whether Sam kills me now Or doesn't open me until Christmas <laughs> And if I get the money, you're ten grand ahead Sure, I've always wanted to be a man about town But not in little chunks <laughs> Besides, shut the... up I... What do you think, Sam? It is moot, boss Very, very moot Dad, I write ten grand off my books. Alive, a possible asset. What if he runs away? Him? We'll find him. Yeah, yeah, I hear you find people so good that after you find him, nobody else can find him. <laughs> now listen. I just... <clears throat> I got some property out on Long Island. See a casino. Oh, I know the place. They closed it down for repairs. The roulette wheel started paying off. <laughs> I'm coming north to peddle it, see? You have the money for me Christmas Eve or Christmas morning. You'll find your head in your stocking. My head and my stocking. Oh, but that's not... Oh. <laughs> the paper says they're having a real cold spell in New York. Lots of snow, blizzards, but you won't mind. You'll be sweating, huh, kid? Blizzards? I don't even have an overcoat. Don't worry, kid. Maybe Santa will bring you one. Hand tailored. Out of cement. <laughs> Open 
Brady. All right, come in. Brainy, you gorgeous doll, you. You're late, kid. Yeah, but I came right over as soon as I hit town. Six months late. You left with my fur coat. You were going to pawn it for me. I waited for you to come back. Well, it's like this. I was on my way back with your money, and all at once I heard about a big deal in Florida. Well, I figured you won't need a fur coat in Florida. You went to Florida. I stayed right here. Look, I'm out at the racetrack with some wealthy friends, and I get to thinking about the woman I love. Meaning you, Brainy Baxter. Keep going, kid. Naturally, I don't even wait to change my clothes. I grab the first plane home. My luggage is on the way. If Miami is fat, how come you left in such a hurry? Well, I just told you. Besides, there's a horse in the second race named Wedding Ceremony. Wedding Ceremony? What a hunch. Couldn't mean anybody but you and me. You went to Florida. I stayed right here, singing my heart out every night in Oxford Charlie's nightclub. Gee, that's great. All that dough rolling in every week, huh? Now, look, kid. I remember how you operate. No holes barred. But let's not talk about any wedding ceremony unless you're on the level. Why is it nobody trusts me just because I once had a transfusion from a used car dealer? <laughs> oh, but I'll do anything to be worthy of your brainy. I'd even get a job. That Florida son is stronger than I thought. A wedding ceremony and a job? <laughs> That's the greatest long shot parlay of the year. Yeah, I just wish I hadn't left my wallet in my new cashmere slacks. Boy, you can't trust those maws. As soon as my clothes arrive, I'll take ten bucks and go right down and get a license. That'll show you. I've got ten dollars. See? Ten dollars. And I'm calling your bluff, kid. We can get that license right now. Oh, doll, I'll go right down to the license bureau. All right, wait here while I change. Oh, my purse. I'd better take it with me, if you don't mind. Now, Brainy, listen. Listen, I got a great idea. No need of you going alone. You stay here and fix up the place. Remember, this apartment's our honeymoon cottage. Get a lot of champagne and confetti, huh? And just stand there, just like that. Beautiful. All the way downtown. I want to remember you. Smiling. But we both have to appear for a license. Hey, kid, wait! Oh, no. My ten dollars. Well, he did it again. <laughs> Needy folks, put something in the pot. Mm. <laughs> At least you've got a pot. <laughs> Help the needy folks. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, little girl. Help the needy. Well, what do you want? Boy, what a sweet little racket you've got. <laughs> now look, mister, every dollar in that pot goes to help the needy and keep your big mitts out of here. Just a Santa Claus suit, a pot, and a bell. Thanks a lot, Dad. You just gave me a great idea. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> just drop it in the pot, sir, and save a life. Merry Christmas, sir. Blessings on you, kind sir. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. Ho, ho, ho. Jingle bells. Happy Yuletide. This way, folks. Step up and save a life at Christmas. Money, money, money. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Does Santa hear an echo? Does Santa see a big man in a blue suit? Policeman John. Oh, Merry, Merry Christmas, sir. Perhaps you'd like a little sample out of the pot, sir? Trying to bribe a police officer, huh? The lemon drop kid. All dressed up like Santa Claus. Whiskers and everything. Who'd you think I was? Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer? Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Merry, Merry Christmas! Save a life, huh? Where did you get that sign? Whose life? Mine. Come on, kid. You're under arrest. Oh, you can't take me. Who am I in the store? Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm innocent. I'm just a small businessman. I'm in the Santa Claus business. You coming peaceful or do I phone for the reindeer? No, I'll take a cab and meet you at the station. One more crack out of you and I'll... <laughs> what does that mean? Let's go. And here's the evidence, Your Honor, this pot full of money. Now, where's the prisoner? Sidney Milburn? Sidney Milburn? Gee, imagine anybody with a name like Sidney Mil... Hey, that's me. <laughs> Present, Your Honor. Sidney Milburn, alias the Lemon Drop Kid. Have a lemon drop, sir? Ouch. <laughs> Collecting money for charity without a license. How do you plead? I plead poverty. <laughs> but, Your Honor, I was standing in the corner with my bell and kettle like hundreds of other everyday average American Santa Clauses when this Batinsky... That's all, Milburn. 
Ten days or fifty dollars. Well, if you don't mind taking it in small change, I think there's enough in the pot to beat the rat. This money I... is going to the children's home. Ten days. Yeah, but I haven't got any other cash, Judge, and I can't spare ten days to put such a hole in the week. <laughs> oh, I rather think that can be arranged. Yeah, but you don't understand, sir. Moose Moran is good. Watch that. Who? Oh, nothing, nothing, Your Honor. Take him away. Oh, but Judge, can I make one phone call? No, I suppose so. Get your fish hooks out of that pot. But my call, it's long distance. <laughs> this way, Sidney. Boy, that judge didn't look honest to me. There's the phone. Go make your call. Let's wait till my lawyers get through with you. Here, hold my beard. What lawyers? Duncan, Munkin, Schmunkin, and Brainy. <laughs> You'll be wearing your brass buttons at half mast. You'll be. Hello? Brainy. Oh, baby, am I glad to hear your voice. Baby? Yeah, lady lawyer. Gee, honey, where do you think I am? Now, don't tell me. Let me guess. At the License Bureau, of course. You married yourself. How cozy. No, no, no. Now, look, baby. I started for the License Bureau, but on the way down, I stopped in my old room at the Y to get your photograph. I like to look at it when I'm not with you. Well, the doorman wouldn't let me in to get it, so one thing led to another, and he poked me, and I poked him, and where do you think I am? In the pokey. <laughs> you know, honey, in the jug. I want you to come down and pull the cork out. In the pokey, eh? Stay there, just the way you are. Beautiful. I want to remember you, smiling. Smiling? Who's smiling? Brainy, baby, you got to listen to me. Listen to you. My fur coat listened to you. My ten bucks listened to you. I listened to you, and we're all fed up listening to you. So long, kid. And remember, if I don't get in touch with you, by all means, don't get in touch with me. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Brainy, Brainy, baby. She can't do this to me. <laughs> Coin box. Holy smoke, the jackpot. Oh, that Crosby's got it hidden every place. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Two of The Lemon Drop Kid. Act Two of The Lemon Drop Kid, starring Bob Hope in the title role and Marilyn Maxwell as Brainy. The Lemon Drop Kid is not in what might be called an enviable situation. He owes $10,000 to a very unfriendly gangster, and any chance he had of raising the money has been shattered by his arrest for impersonating Santa Claus. In jail, the kid has a visitor, Moose Moran's special secretary, Sam the Surgeon. Well, Sam the Surgeon, pull up a trustee and sit down. You come to do your Christmas chopping early? I have just come to remind Santa Claus what Moose Moran wants for Christmas. I remember. I remember. You can put your knife in mothballs. I've got an idea. I know I can come up with a ten grand. Oh, that is fine, kid, because some of the smart boys are starting to give Moose the laugh, and Moose does not enjoy that. Hey, you know that gambling casino Moose used to have out on Long Island? With that joint, the cops closed a week ago. I know, I know. So all we have to do is open it up until Christmas. Oh, uh, if Moose cannot open it up for high-class gambling, you cannot even open it up for a bingo parlor. Sam, my scheme is strictly legal, but I think Moose will like it anyway. You know an old doll named Nellie Thursday? Oh, who does not know Nellie Thursday? I ran into her yesterday. She's selling papers. Selling papers? That is awful. That nice old tomato? Yeah, she's broke. She hasn't even got a place to sleep. You know, it gets pretty uncomfortable in those roller towels. I know. Now, here's my idea. I borrow Moose's casino. I pretend it's an old folks home, see? I put up a sign and a picture of Bernard McFadden. Then I stick Nellie in there and a bunch of old dolls. With them in it, I can tout the city and they give me a license to collect for charity. Continue, kid. I further figure I can get every mug on Broadway to help to do the collecting. They all love Nellie. And by Christmas Eve, I'll have enough donations to pay off Moose. What happens to the old dolls after the Yuletide? Well, can I help it if suddenly the collection money just happens to get lost? Moose will have his dough and I'll be in the clear, see? That sounds crazy, but that is not my department. I only start operating if you do not pay off. Where'd you intern at, the finance company? <laughs> oh, before you go, there's a little matter of the $50 fine. You advance it, and I'll owe Moose a nice round figure, $10,050. Uh, no thanks, kid. We like having you in the deep freeze. We can thaw you out in time for the holiday season. Merry Christmas in just 15 days. <laughs> Keep using those blue blades. <laughs> Sam with a beard. <laughs> Merry Christmas.
Christmas, 15 days. I'm a goner. I can see my life passing before my eyes. If I only had some popcorn, I could enjoy it. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. Say something, Santa Claus. Yeah, please let me out of here. Please. Hey, I should have said please a long time ago. There's a young lady waiting for you out there. She just now paid your fine. Paid my... Oh, yeah? Well, it's about time. Gee, Brainy, I knew you'd come. Couldn't fight it, huh? I know I'm the world's biggest dope, but... Well, maybe you've learned a lesson. Oh, I missed you too, Brainy. Yes, I'll bet. Incidentally, is this how they dress you in jail now? Oh, I guess you're wondering about the Santa Claus outfit. Oh, I know, sport. You always were a flashy dresser. Now, take off that phony beard, will you? That's not phony. I've been using Sam's razor. (laughs) Boy, you... You don't know how it is to feel free again. Well, you're going to be free for about five minutes because we're heading downtown for a marriage license. Together. Rainy, you're making me the happiest man in the world. And there'd be no more singing for a few measly dollars a week anymore. Not when you're my wife. We'll make Oxford Charlie give you a raise. But I don't want to work. Be reasonable. One of us has to. (laughs) And just think, in only a few short weeks, we'll be Mr. and Mrs. Lemon Drop Kid. A few short weeks? What's the stall this time? Come on, honey, let's walk. Just wait till you hear what I got to tell you. See, Brainy, it's all for her. It's all for Nellie Thursday. Oh, Sydney, that, that's wonderful. And to think that this was all your idea, a home for poor old ladies. Well, somebody's got to help them. I, I've got to apologize, Sydney. You know, at first I... Well, at first I thought you were working on some sort of an angle. Well, I didn't explain it very well, but I'm not used to this sort of thing. It's honest. I'm sorry, kid. I can't let Nellie down. I've still got a heart, you know. Only because you couldn't figure out a way to hock it. Now, the first thing I've got to do is round up all of Nellie's friends. I'll tell them what I've got in mind. Okay if we meet at your apartment tonight? Well, well, sure, I'll be working, but I... Gee, Brainy, I'll bet you're proud of me. Well, I am. Yeah, me too. Kid, you call us all on the Broadway just to give us this pitch about Nellie Thursday? Straight flesh is dubious. Me likewise? Yeah. Yeah, but you gotta believe me. And there must be dozens of old ladies like Nellie Thursday. Old dolls who can't get into homes because maybe they rolled a lush or peddled a little homemade beer in the old days. Maybe even your own mother. They never hung no rap on mom. <laughs> Look in the mirror sometime. <laughs> and you, straight flush, when you were down and out last year, who staked you to a new deck of marked cards? Nellie oh. Thursday! You bet she did. Why, there's not one of you citizens that Nellie Thursday hasn't helped. Okay, then. So everybody go home and get a good night's sleep. We're all getting up at noon tomorrow. Oh. Oh. Well, Nellie? Maybe now you believe us, huh? Yeah, we told you you had a new home in the country, Nellie, and here it is. We even put up a sign. The Nellie Thursday Home for Old Dolls. Oh, kid. <laughs> Easy on those tears, Nellie. This is a cheap suit. If it gets wet, it turns into rompers. <laughs> Don't take it too large. This is just a two-bit boarding house in Long Island. Nellie, polo field for a backyard. Hot and cold running petunias. And we brought you a few things from Center Park, Nell, just in case you was to get loads. Look, Nellie, they're on the lawn. Why, boys, General Sherman's statue. <laughs> 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 Professor Maydak's bringing his horse on the next trip. I would have brought the lake, but the ducks put up a fight. <laughs> well, it, it is an old folks' home, isn't it? The best. We're going to get the cream of the Saratan set. And any broken down old doll is welcome. And you did all this for me? Every chiseler on Broadway is knocking himself out for you. And you sure Moose Moran turned this place over to us? Oh, sure he did. Now, you let me do all the worrying, will you? Well, it's just that Moose never struck me as being, well, generous. You can't tell about people, Nellie. I guess you're right, Brainy. Some of the bad ones are good inside, and 
Some of the good ones are bad inside. Kid, look! There's someone here already. I'll say there is. Okay, ladies, you can open up the front door. Ready, girls. Three cheers for Nelly Sunday. Hit, hit, hooray! Hit, hit, hooray! Hit, hit, hooray! <laughs> you see, now? Just in case you needed some friends to play pinocchio with her, maybe a game of softball, we loaded up on old dolls. See that Nellie meets the rest of the sorority, will you, Brady? Well, you remember Mrs. Baumgarten. And singing Sapphire's mother-in-law? <laughs> singing Sapphire donated her. We've got the beer, Professor Wingard. This is the housewarming. Yeah. <laughs> Man, the old dolls are all asleep and snoring it up. Not only that, they'll be happy when they wake up tomorrow. I'm proud of you. Oh, it was darling. Now, can we go back to Broadway? We're all going back. Just one thing. Well, now, we meet tomorrow at 12 o'clock. That's when you all get fitted out in a Santa Claus suit. Oh, and bring your own pots. Let's go, Brainy. Happy Hogan's riding us back in his truck. Haven't you forgotten something? Hmm? Aren't you going to kiss me, Sidney? Oh, wait till I swallow my lemon drop. You know, this way, young dolls become old dolls. Oh, fine. I'll order a rocking chair. Make it a two-seater, huh? <laughs> Boy, I hate hunking during smooching. <laughs> Come on, Jay, let's get going. You heard him, Brainy. Just one more for yeah, the road. Just the lower lip, huh? <laughs> Honey, it would ruin you. <laughs> All right, men, fall in, fall in. Oh, boy. Just as I pictured you, every fellow a jolly old Saint Nick. Singing Sapphire? Yeah, yeah, kid. Pick up your belly, will you? You look like a shoplifter. And St. Nick don't smoke heaters. I thought I was supposed to be Santa Claus. Santa Claus, St. Nick, Chris Kringle. It's all the same guy. Oh, I get it. He don't give his right name neither. Yeah. Okay, Gloomy. Let me have the bottle. Well, it's cold out there in the street. Santa Claus don't drink. Oh, no? Then how come he's always falling down chimneys? <laughs> hey, straight flush. Let's hear your routine. Me? Yeah. Come on, give out with your pitch. Hey, Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, just work your own neighborhood. All right. <laughs> While you look great, man, just don't act like you're handling hot reindeer. Now, remember, this is a legitimate business. We got a license to collect. Now, get out there in the street and put your heart in it, just like you would if it was a shady deal. Hey, kid, kid, what about all them other Santies? Yeah, the streets are lousy with jolly old fat guys. Well, put that slug on them. Oh, yeah, that's are the you right kidding? Idea. And have them start yelling for Prancer Dancer and Flatfoot, nothing doing. You can't go putting the slug on other Santas, even if they're in season. Now, keep your pots open and your trap shut. We gotta get ten grand. Tension, men. Just boots, bellies, beards. Now, go out and load your pots. So, if it's all right with you, Oscar Charlie, I'll be leaving the show tonight. You see, the kids appointed me head sheepdog to watch over the Nelly Thursday home. Tell me, Brainy, what has that guy got that makes everybody jump through a hook? And the crazier his schemes, the higher they jump. A lot of people who love Nellie Thursday don't think it's so crazy. A smart girl like you gives up a job. Every penny any character on the street blows his top hustling donations. Nah, you're all wacky. You Maybe wacky, Charlie, but not penny ante. Why, in four days, we've raised $2,000. What? Those baggy pants Santa's raised two grand? Uh-huh. And it's all due to the kid. Just think. Yeah. Yeah, I am thinking. 
Hey, uh, look, uh, you better get out on the floor, honey. I just thought of something I gotta do. Thanks a lot, Charlie. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Charlie. Uh, come on in the office. And bring Lippy. I just got a big idea. Just a minute, Charlie. You ain't figuring us wearing them monkey suits and ringing them little bells. All I said was we're muscling in on the lemon drop kid. If that lame brain can raise two grand in four days, we can raise 20. But, Charlie, the kid gets a city license. The Nelly Thursday home, it says. Okay. I got a home up in Nyack, don't I? You mean we're going to snatch a house full of old dolls? That's it, exactly. Now, shut up and listen. The first thing we're going to do is get... <laughs> Christmas. Oh, bless you, kind sir. Bless you. Another day, another dollar. Less taxes. Bless you, sir. Please help, folks. Anything at all. Anything to help the Nellie Thursday home. I've got five dollars here. If the little lady will sing another Christmas song. Five dollars. Oh, that's the one chorus treatment. Now, for ten dollars, she'll sing Mockingbird Hill while I lay an egg in this cup. <laughs> I'm afraid Sandy gets carried away, sir. Of course I'll sing. Just ring those bells, will you, Santa Claus? Silver bells, silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ring, hear them ring, soon it will be Christmas day. Sidewalk, busy sidewalk, dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. Ring a ling. Hear them ring. Soon there will be Christmas, Christmas Day. I tell you, Gloomy, there's nothing like coming home after freezing all day in a windy corner. I hope Brainy's waiting to defrost me. Sure. You can have dinner with Brainy. Me, I end up with one of them overripe pinup girls. I could have stayed in town and gone to the Waldorf. <laughs> the Waldorf? What's that, a new joint? What is that? How dare you, the Waldorf. Lay off, will you, kid? You don't have to fisk me. I thought you were holding out some loot. Oh, yeah? What's that bulge in your pocket? Chesterfield. <laughs> I got my own Santa Claus. Now, come on in the house and let's... Hey, hey. Hey, what goes on? Huh? The house. Look, the sign's gone. The lights are out. The front door's open. The joint's deserted. Hey, the door. Kids, where are you running to? Out on the lawn. General Sherman statue. Ah. General Sherman, his head comes off, see? You better hold still while I check your hood. D <laughs> no, you don't understand. The money, all the money we've been collecting. I hid it here in General Sherman's head. Huh? I hid it. I thought nobody knew about it but me. Well, maybe it's still there. Maybe. Yeah, look. Look, it's empty. Huh? Nobody knew about it but me, huh? Gloomy. You see those footprints in the snow? Oxford Charlie. Who else wears a custom-made 14 quadruple A? <laughs> Come on, Gloomy. We're going to find Oxford Charlie. <laughs> In just a few moments, we'll bring you Act Three of The Lemon Drop Kid. The curtain rises on Act Three of The Lemon Drop Kid. Well, it's nice to see you, Lemon Drop. Hiya, boys. How about a drink? Just pour out our old ladies and make it snappy. Hey, straight flush. You used to work for Moose Moran. Well, I'm going to call Moose long distance. He's still in Florida. And you ask Moose why the Lemon Drop Kid is trying to raise ten grand. Yeah, but, but that's so silly. I mean, you know how Moose hates being disturbed. Shut up. Okay, Packy, get Moose Moran on the phone. You may pick up the phone, Oxford Charlie. Mr. Moran will talk. Yeah, talk to him, Straight Flush. Hello, Moose. Uh, this is Straight Flush. Uh, Oxford Charlie is trying to tell us the Lemon Drop Kid is uh, something less than on the level. Huh? You don't say. He did. Yeah. Ah. Oh. 
And guess who you are, the biggest suckers in the whole world? There I was, standing in the corner, wearing a hokey suit and dinging my little bell. Hey, the kid, where'd he go? He's gone. Come on, let's find it. No good, two bits. Forget about him, gents. Moose Moran will take care of him. From now on, you guys are wicked. So Charlie lets you get away, huh? Brainy. I figured you'd look for the back gate. But why bother to open it? Just crawl under. Now look, Brainy, I can explain everything. You've been explaining dirty tricks since the first time I met you. Well, I have to raise ten grand. Did you want to see me rubbed out? On Christmas Eve, Moose Moran is going to mark me paid in full. I'll be gift wrapped for the dead letter office. That's not for three days yet. Now, what do you expect me to do? Steal the money back from a hoodlum like Oxford Charlie? Why not? Then at least somebody around Broadway might shed a tear for you. That's more than I'll ever do again. Nellie! Hey, Nellie! Wait a minute. Oh, it's you. Gee, I'm sure glad to see you. You got away from Oxford, Charlie. What about the others? They're still there in Nyack. As if you cared one way or another. Yeah, I guess they all think I'm an awful heel, huh? That'll do for a starter. Now look, Nellie... A bunch of swell guys collected a lot of dough for you. I'm not going to let a cheat, a chiseler, and a crumb gum up the works. I'll listen to your autobiography some other time. I'm talking about Oxford Charlie. How'd you get out? And what about Brainy? The others are still there, like I said. I waited for my chance, and I sneaked out. Yeah, well, if you can sneak out, I can sneak in. We sound like President Truman and Senator Taft. (laughs) Well, if you're going to do any sneaking, it better be out of the country. Huh? I hear Moose Moran is coming back from Florida tomorrow. Moose Moran? Bah! This is the bravest page I've had so far. <laughs> he's going out to Long Island to sell the casino. I also hear he's got another matter to take care of. Yeah, well, I'm still going to get that money from Oxford, Charlie. It belongs to you and the other old doll. Oh, don't try it, kid. Charlie's got guards all over the place. Yeah, well, who's going to know me? I mean, if I go up there dressed up like an old doll... You dressed up like a woman? Well, just give me a wig and a pair of glasses, and, well, I I got by a Santa Claus, didn't I? Besides, I got a great angle. Now, listen to me, Nell, just this once more. Yeah. I want you to round up all the boys, take them to the courthouse, get a hold of the judge. Yeah? I'm a poor old lady who has nothing to eat kind, sir. And I hear this is an old lady's home. All I ask is a place to rest and plug in my heating pad. <laughs> We're up to our ears and old dolls now. Oh, but I have no place to go, sir. All my life I've had to scrimp and save to support my children. I've sewed till my eyes burn, cooked over a hot stove day after day. I even have to take in floors to wash. <laughs> Sorry, old doll. No dice. Oh, please, sir. If you turn me away, I'll have no place to go except to the authorities. Uh, Hold it, Mother. Come right in. I'll talk to the boss. Seeing as you're a poor old doll with nothing to eat, maybe you'll change my mind. Oh, you nice young man. I'll just sit here with my knitting till you return. Thanks for the memory. The name, Mom. Hmm? Oh, it's uh, Beasley. Mrs. Herbert Beasley. I'll be right back, Mrs. Beasley. Sensible, Brainy. I warned you before to stay in line or the boys are going to have to Now you listen to me, Charlie. Nellie's gone. She disappeared. Don't worry. We'll find her. And I may as well tell you, I'm going to get out of here, too. Any way I can. Now may I talk? What do you want? But, boss, I told you. That new old doll outside. Eh, one more won't hurt. Besides, we can't ever go into the cops. Tell her to come in. Okay, Mrs. Beasley. This here is Mrs. Herbert Beasley, boss. Welcome to the home, Mrs. Beasley. Oh, you mean you'll accept me as a guest? Yeah, sure I will. Oh, I'm so happy I could cry. Woo! Hey, Maxie, take her up to the other nice old ladies, will you? Uh, Oh, you're a good man, a very good man. Now, forget it, Mother. Now, run along with Maxie, will you? Oh, thank you, sir. Bless you, bless you. Hey, 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 you nice old lady. Yes? You took that bag off of my desk. Oh, my goodness, so I did, clumsy me. Yeah, that briefcase is full of money. It's all for you nice old ladies. Yeah, heavy, isn't it? <laughs> I do hope you'll forgive me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, just run along with Maxie. 
That nose. I've seen that snow shovel before. <laughs> no, no, I'm just getting nervous, I guess. This is the newest member of the club, ladies. Shake hands with Mrs. Beasley. How do you do? Oh, I know. I'm going to be happy with all you nice people my own age. It's so jolly when we get ready for bed tonight, we can all get together and match mustard plasters. Oh, you poor dear. Sit down here. I'll take your knitting bag. Oh, thank you. Oh, ladies. Isn't it lovely here? We hate to disillusion you, Mrs. Beasley, but this is nothing but a great big, horrid old jail. A jail? Oh, dear me, but the warden, he seemed like such a nice one. Uh, that man is Oxford Charlie, the racketeer. Horrors! He's as big a hoodlum as the lemon drop kid. Yes. <laughs> um, what are you working on, dear? Uh, may I look in your knitting bag? Everybody thinks I'm terribly inquisitive, but I just... Oh, look! A gun! Oh, oh, oh. I can explain that, ladies. After General Custer was massacred, Mr. Beasley insisted that I carry this pistol at all times. Indians, you know. Those pesky redskins. But what in the world are you knitting? This? Oh, it's just a mop. <laughs> It'll go well with my Argyle scrub bucket. <laughs> it's hot, isn't it? Oh, it is warm in here, but don't you think a larger size girdle would be much more sensible at your age? Oh, I take a small. Always have. Dear Mr. Beasley was so proud of my hourglass figure. You still have your hourglass figure, dear. Thank you. But most of the sand has gone to the bottom. <laughs> Something, dearie? Oh, I was just... <laughs> I, um... Uh, I was just saying, I hope you'll all excuse me now. I, I have to go downstairs and sign the register. Uh, the less you have to do with that nasty Oxford Charlie, the better. Hurry back, dear. You just can't go busting into my private office, Mrs. Beasley. you got to stay upstairs. Oh, I, I've interrupted you. You're counting your money. <laughs> Did someone leave all that to you, or are you saving up for a pot roast? Uh, now be a nice old doll and scram out of here. Oh, but I brought you a present. It's here in my knitting bag, see? Ah, uh, you shouldn't have... Hey, 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 Mrs. Beasley, hey, that's a gun. Yeah, boy, what a performance. I hate to stop it. Hey, the lemon drop, oh, kid. Why, you... Right. I... Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Oh. Excuse me. I didn't know you was entertaining the lady. Oh, save me, save me, you bad impulsive boy. You, you're ripping my dress. Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, boss. After all. Grab her, Axie, grab her. Get out of my way, young man. She's cut the dough. She's a lemon drop kid. No, no, no. You wouldn't hit an old lady with spackers. You did. Don't stop her. He's got the money. It's a lemon drop kid. He's got the money. <laughs> Hello, who the hat's alone? Oh, this is Miss... Oh, hey, this is the Lemon Drop Kid. Let me talk to Nellie Thursday. Oh, sure, kid. She's been waiting to hear from you. It's him, Nell. Kid, you alive? Yeah, and I got the dough, 16 grand. Well, it's all set, kid. Moose is waiting for you now out of the casino, and all the rest of us will be out there before midnight. That's all I want to know, Nell. I got to hang up. Oxford Charlie's breathing down my neck. So long. I hate to say goodbye. It sounds so permanent. <laughs> This is quite a surprise, kid. Sam, the surgeon, tells me that you'll bring glad tidings. Yeah, it's right here in this briefcase, Moose. I got it all counted out for you. There you are, 10,000 even, paid in full. Let's never see each other again as often as possible, shall we? <laughs> and believe me, it's going to be fun not knowing you. The Gators, I just don't believe it. Say, Moose, it's almost Christmas, just 15 minutes more. Wouldn't you like to settle for 5,000 just to show your Christmas spirit? And that over. Huh? Well... What about 7500 I said hand it over. No spirit, huh? Well, you can forget my present. You don't even have to... Okay, okay. 10000 even. Paid in full. Hey, Moose. Well, when did you hit town? Oxford Charlie will come on in. Yeah, come on in. Oh, you rat. Where's my 16 grand? Oh, it's all here, Charlie. Now, Moose here is holding 10. Now, let's see. I paid you, didn't I, Moose? 
And here's 16 grand for Charlie. Yeah, but you took my 10 grand. I just got a hold of that doorknob score. I know. It works like the new taxes. <laughs> hey, now, wait a minute. Everybody's paid and everybody's happy. Let's shake hands and wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Just huh? a minute. That's my 10 grand. Oh, yeah, you're the one. This part's his, Charlie. Now, you'll just have to work it out between yourselves. I've certainly done more in my share. Are you chiseling little... Lo- hey, what's going on out there? Delegation from Broadway, boss. They said they'd come here to gamble. Professor Murdoch, Grace Flushing, and Sally, the whole gang. Well, throw them out. We can't have gambling in here. They've got to go on the table. Hey, this stinks a prime up. How'd you guess? And according to my schedule, here come the police. Make you a captain. I am a captain. Well, I'll chrome your whistle. You're under arrest, Moose. We're running the gambling joint again. Get them, boys. Get them all. Oh, uh, come on in, Judge. Judge, this is Oxford Charlie and Moose Moran. I'm getting out of here, Your Honor. The cops can't pin nothing on me. No, but I can. I've been watching your charity racket, Charlie. This money was collected for the Nelly Thursday home, and that's exactly where it's going. Take him away, Captain. And I'm going to keep an eye on you, Mr. Milburn. Oh, you won't have to, Judge. I'm turning over a new leaf. I'll never be caught again. And thanks for everything. If you ever want a winner, Judge, call me. Well, I guess that's that, huh, kid? Gee, you were great, Nellie. And you were on the level. That's all that matters. Hey, Nellie. Hmm? Nellie, have you seen Brainy? I'm here, Sidney. Gee, Brainy, and everything's swell again, huh? What are you up to now, kid? You've got that fixed race look in your eyes. Well, don't you see? That's love light. Come into my arms, honey. This is the payoff, kid. I've been chasing you for ten years, trying to get a yes or a no, trying to get any answer at all. First you don't know, and then you're too busy to talk, and then you won't say anything at all. Well, this is it. What do you say? Keep trying. (laughs) 